This video is about how does the gospel bring life or death? Hi, I'm Bay Gaddafi, and this is Bible Study Verse by Verse. If you'd open your Bible to the New Testament, to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, we'll begin in just a moment. 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 6. How does the gospel bring life or death? For this cause, it says in verse 6, was the gospel preached also to them who are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but living, live according to God in the Spirit. For this cause, and for this cause refers back to the previous verse in verse 5. There it says that unbelievers who judge people who've become Christians and whose lives have been changed, unbelievers who judge them are going to be judged by God. And they will have to give an account to God for that judgment. So, for this reason, the gospel is preached to them, that they can recover themselves out of this error. And, in our verse, it talks about people who have the gospel preached to them being judged according to men in the flesh. That is not good. If you're judged by God and you're found wanting, uh, you end up in hell but live according to God in the Spirit. So, for this cause, the gospel is preached to them that are dead. The cause is to give the people that stand against Christians as they proclaim the truth and live out the truth before them, to give them another chance. And for those people who are dead in their trespasses and sins, to give them a chance to repent and to turn to God. Both of these causes are a mercy from God giving an account to God, the first one, and then the second one, being judged to live or to die. All those are, both of these are a mercy from God. Not all people get to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus. This verse says, it's preached to those who are dead. Well, what in the world does that mean? How do you preach to dead people? Well, this has to do with spiritual death. The whole human race has fallen into sin when Adam fell. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, because of Adam's fall, sin passed upon all men, and all men are sinners. That's where we're born. That's where we live. And if we die there, we, we're dead in our sins, and we're punished for God for our sins. Unless God acts on our behalf to give life where there's death, there's going to be no salvation for us. There's no new birth. There's no relationship with God. There's no eternity with Him. That has to come from God. So, we preach to dead people. I do this all the time in my ministries. I preach to people who are dead. I know they're dead. I was once dead. They're dead. And God takes the word that's preached and gives them life. Ephesians 2, verse 1 and verse 5 says this, And you hath he quickened, or made alive. The King James Version adds that idea of being made alive to make it make sense. And you, who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's us. He's talking to Christians here. Christians were dead in their trespasses and sins. That was our address. Death. Before God saved us. Then verse 5, Even when we were dead in sins... Even when we were in that condition, He has quickened us or made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved. How is it you got saved? It's not because you were so smart. It's not because you could figure out the gospel. It's not because you had a corner on God. It's not because who your parents were. It's not because someone twisted your arm to do it. It's not of the will of the man. It's not of the will of the flesh. It doesn't have to do with any of these things. It has to do with God's sovereign purpose and grace to save a people for himself through his son and him granting life to those people. So when the word is preached, and that's our job to preach the word as accurately and as faithful as we can to people, whether it's a, from a pulpit or whether it's in a Bible study or whether it's one-on-one -on -one over coffee, talking to somebody about the gospel, making sure that you're correct in what you say to them and giving them the truth of God's word, using God's word to speak to them. And in all of that effort, God the Holy Spirit has to grant life to that person. 
That's the way it works. We're laborers together with God. We do our part. God does His part. He brings life through His Word. That's how it works. When the gospel is preached, it does one of two things. It further, the, further condemns the person who hears it. That's what this is saying, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh. <laughs> when you hear the gospel, you're worse off if you do not respond to it. If you do not come in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the other thing it does is it saves people. If you attend it, if you listen to it, if you hear it, if God gives you life through it, then it, then it brings you to Him. So, if you don't believe it, you're damned. If you do believe it, you have life. Jesus talks about this in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. He says, And He said to them, Go into all the world, this is His commission, <clears throat> preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who believes not shall be damned. This is what the Word of God does. This is what the Gospel message does. It brings life or it condemns a person to death. So, preaching to dead people, everybody that needs the Gospel, everybody that's unsaved is a dead person, spiritually. They need to hear the Gospel message. This is what happens when the Gospel is preached. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16 says, Now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and makes manifest the savior, savor of his knowledge by us in every place. So no matter what happens as a result of you preaching the gospel, you've won because you've done what God has commanded you to do. It's up to him to do his part. You do yours, he does his. So this is what Paul is saying here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. It's a savor of life. It's a savor of his knowledge. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, verse 15, in those who are saved and in those who perish. To the one, the people that are not saved, we are a savor of death unto death, he says. And to the other, a savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Well, the answer is no one is. This comes from God. Salvation is a gift of God. It's the plan of God. It's God's Son dying in our place on the cross. It's our faith that we have in Him, which is a gift. It's our repentance of our sins and turning away from them, which is a gift from God. All these things come from God. And they all happen when the gospel message is preached. To some, it brings life. To others, it brings death. If the Holy Spirit attends it, he gives life with it. John 6, 63 says, It is the Spirit who quickens. Or that word means makes alive. Who makes alive? Who gives spiritual life? Well, in John chapter 3, Jesus talks all about it to Nicodemus. The wind, he compares to the Holy Spirit. He's the one that gives life. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh, he says, profits nothing. The words I speak to you, to you, they are spirit and they are life. The life-giving words of the Lord Jesus are spirit and life to us. Life comes to us from the Lord Jesus. He is the source of life. He is life incarnate. He is the person that we must come to God through in order to get life. The word of the gospel by the spirit gives life. And there's no escape for those who who refused the gospel message. Hebrews 12, 24 through 25 says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So it's a comparison, and uh, it's talking about the excellencies of the Lord Jesus, as the whole book of, of Hebrews does. See that re you refuse him not who speaks. In other words, listen to what Jesus has to say. Don't refuse him. For if they escaped who refused him who spoke on earth, that is Moses and the law and the prophets and, and all those people that came before, if, if, if you heard them and you refused, you died. If they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. That's the idea. There's no escape for us if we refuse the gospel message. 
So, what is this talking about in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 6? Gospel being preached to dead people. Dead people are just the normal, everyday person without Christ. They're spiritually dead. We preach the gospel to them, and it has one of two effects. It either condemns them, or it gives them life. That's our job. The condemnation of unbelievers through the gospel, and the salvation of believers through the gospel. Life and death are in the gospel. Hear it, believe it, and live, or reject it and die. There is no excuse for those who have heard the gospel message and have rejected it. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below to go there. Then you can click on the playlist and select the videos you'd like to watch. If you have questions or comments about this video, you can email me at, all one word, Bible study v by v at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study, verse by verse.